Assalamualaikum and hi everyone Jadi sesi kali ini kita akan lihat Presentation para pelajar yang akan berkongsi ilmu Bersama kawan-kawan Bagi persediaan menghadapi final exam yang bakal tiba Dalam sesi dari kita untuk kita Jom kita tengok Hi and Assalamualaikum to all of you. My name is Anissa Shahira Wendy Ibrahim and I am from S15P10. So I would like to explain to all of you about scalar and vector. Okay, the definition of scalar is quantity with magnitude only, which is scalar is just to convey the magnitude only. So the examples that we can see for scalar quantity is speed, volume, mass and time. So Kata tanya yang sesuai digunakan untuk skala kuantiti ni ialah how, berapa, berapa speed, berapa volume, berapa mass, how the time. So next vector, vector the, the definition of vector is quantity with both magnitude and direction. So vector ni dia convey magnitude and direction. So the example of vector quantity is force, velocity, acceleration and momentum. So, vektor ni sangat penting dalam fizik uh, sebab contoh dalam force, kita tak tahu berapa, how much force they apply and which way their direction. Okay, a symbol for vector is ball A which is a vector of A can be represented by an arrow. So, the length of the arrow is uh, in the case of its magnitude. So, arrow, arrow H shows the direction. Okay, direction ni sangat penting sebab dia akan bagi kita maklumat. So now let us listen to Professor Professor Dev explanation about vector addition and vector substitution. If we want to add two vectors together, it's pretty simple. We just make the second vector start where the first vector ends and then create a new resultant vector that goes from the start of the first to the end of the second. In lining up two vectors, we have to make sure they retain their direction as that is important information. If the vectors point in the same direction, their sum will just be a longer vector, and the magnitude of this resultant vector will simply be the sum of the magnitudes of the original vectors. So in this case, 4 plus 3 equals 7. Sometimes there is an angle between the two vectors, like these perpendicular vectors. In this case, when we draw the resultant vector, it will be the hypotenuse of a right triangle. The magnitude of this resultant vector is not the sum of the other two magnitudes. This one can be found by using the Pythagorean theorem, which we may remember from algebra class. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Plug in a and b, square them, and find the sum. And then we take the square root to get c, which in this case will be 5. We can use the lengths of these sides to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle. We will cover these functions in more depth in the upcoming mathematics course. But for now, all we need to remember is the mnemonic device SOKATOA. Sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, that would be three-fifths. Cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which here will be four-fifths. And tangent theta is opposite over adjacent, or three-fourths. To solve for theta, we can use any of these equations. Using this one, we can take the inverse sine of both sides. That makes theta equal to the inverse sine of 3 fifths. Just put 3 over 5, or 0 0.6, into your calculator and press the inverse sine button, which may look like any of these expressions, and we get about 36.9 degrees. Trigonometric functions like these relate the angles of a right triangle to the lengths of the sides and we will use them a lot in physics, but it usually won't be more complicated than this, so don't worry too much about it. That when subtracting vectors, we will again line them up head to tail, but we will invert the direction of the second vector. This is the same as multiplying the vector by a scalar of negative one. This way, the magnitude of the vector remains the same, but its direction is reversed. So instead of a plus b, which looks like this, a minus b would look like this, which is essentially a plus negative b. 
we find the resultant vector, and that's all there is. So now let us try some questions to find magnitude and direction. So question one. Um, Based on the diagram, F1 given is 200 Newton and F2 given is 300 Newton. F1, F1 degree is 30 degree above horizontal line and F2 given also above horizontal line uh, which is 45 degree. So what we need to do now is to find the resultant of these two forces to find Fx and Fy. So first, what we need to do is do a table for column X, uh, for component X and component Y of F1 and F2. Okay, kita buat F1 dulu. Okay, uh, component X for F1, we will use cos. So, kita masukkan F1 cos 30, 200 cos 30, we will get 173.2 Newton. For component Y for F1, we will use sin. So, 200 sin 30, we will get 100 Newton. Okay, sekarang kita buat F2 pula. Okay, nak cari component X of F2, we will use we will use cos. But the cos is negative because uh, dekat quadrant 2, quadrant 2 yang hanya positif ialah sin. So, bila cos dekat quadrant 2, sedia akan jadi negatif. So, we will uh, get negative 300 cos 45. So, we will get negative 212.1 Newton. So, for component Y of F2, okay. Kita masukkan je, still use sine, 300 sine 45, so we will get 212.1 Newton. So, sine dia positif sebab dekat kawadian 2, so it maintain positif. So, now kita cari total Fx and Fy. So, untuk Fx kita dapat negatif 38.9 and Fy kita dapat 312.1 Newton. So, now kita nak cari magnitude pula. Okay, formula for magnitude uh, is punca kuasa of Fx kuasa 2 tambah Fy kuasa 2. So, kita dapat Fx dia negatif 389 kuasa 2 tambah, 3, tambah Fy which is 312.1 kuasa 2. Lepas tu kita punca kuasa kan and then kita dapat 314.5 Newton. So, dah dapat dah magnitude, kita cari direction. Okay, direction, kita guna formula tangent theta sama dengan Fy over Fx. So, kita dapat Fy dia 312.1 Newton tadi kan. Uh, over the Fx uh, which is negatif 389. Tapi, negatif kita tak payah pening-pening tak payah letak. So, kita just letak 389 without the negatif. So, bila selesai-selesaikan, kita dapat degree dia, theta dia ialah 82.9 degree. So, next question. So, the, the diagram shown that F1 given is 20... Newton and F2 is 50 Newton. So, macam, macam biasa kita kena cari, kita nak kena resolve these two forces and to find effect, to find Fx and Fy. So, F1 dia punya degree ialah 30, de 30 degree above horizontal line but F2 degree dia ialah 40 tapi bawah horizontal line. So, kita buat table sediakan column untuk komponen X, komponen Y, F1, F2 Okay, kita buat F1 dulu F1 of component X of F1 uh, Kita guna cos Still guna cos So, masukkan 20 Newton Cos 30, we will get 17.32 Newton So, component Y of F1 F1 sin 30 So, masukkan 20 sin 30 We will get 10 Newton Okay, seterusnya F2 pula Component X of F2 Kita guna cos juga And then, kita masukkan 50 cos 40 degree We will get 38.30 Newton So, while uh, component Y of F2, kita, jadi, kita guna sign. Kita masukkan. Tapi, sign dia negatif sebab uh, dekat kuadrant 4 yang positif hanyalah cos. And sign, bila kat kuadrant, dia masuk kat kuadrant 4, dia jadi negatif. So, uh, negatif 50, sign 40, we will get negatif 32.14 Newton. So, now kita total up kan. Kita cari total forces for Fx and Fy. So, kita dapat Fx 55.62 Newton While Fy kita dapat negatif 22.14 Newton Okay, now kita nak cari magnitude pula Okay, macam tadi kita guna formula magnitude Kita masukkan Fx kuasa 2 tambah F, Fy kuasa 2 And then kita punca kan, kita dapat 59.86 Newton So, lepas tu dah dapat magnitude, kita cari direction Direction, kita still guna formula tangent theta equal to Fy over Fx. So, kita dapat tadi kan, Fy dia negatif. So, kita jangan pening, kita just letak 
2014 dia kata tak ada tak So 2014 over 55.62 So kita akan dapat degree dia ialah 21 Theta dia ialah 21.7 degree I think that's all for me I hope you guys understand And kalau ada salah silap dekat video ni Harap you guys boleh tegur okay Thank you Good morning everyone, today we will discuss about the unit vectors in Cartesian coordinate. At first, we need to know the three axes in the Cartesian coordinate which are y axis, x axis and also z axis. z axis is perpendicular to the y and the x axis. Let's say this is x axis and this is y axis. The z axis is located at here. Okay, this one is z axis. Okay, let us continue. The unit vector of in the direction of x and z is represented by i gap, y is represented by j gap, and z is represented by k gap. So, in the Cartesian coordinate, this uh, is assumed that this one. So, the unit vector in the direction of x and z is here. Start from the origin is here, and y is here, and z is here. Okay, so we call it as i gap, j gap, and the k gap. Okay, let us see the example one. It's a 2D dimension. So let's say we have a object here, and this one is as as three, one and four. We need to find the unit vector of OP. Okay, OP will be represent by. See carefully. Start from the origin to the direction of as as it. This one is three. So three unit three I get. Plus y is x our four four j gap. Okay, this is our unit vector. Okay, let us see the example two three dimension. Okay, this one is a shape of cube board, three D cube board. So we need to find the unit vector of OP. Okay, so OP we see it from the okay as as this is three units, so it's three i gap. Why is this is here compared to this one? So it's one, so j gap. You see the z axis. Z axis is uh, perpendicular to the y and x axis. So it is moved out from the paper. So we can see here this one is z axis. So it's 5 k gap. Okay, okay. So that's all from me about the unique vector in Cartesian coordinate. Thank you.